I want to 100% and platinum every Minecraft game. Minecraft Legends is free on PlayStation Plus for April 2024, so that seems like a good place to start. Released only a year ago in April 2023, Minecraft Legends is kind of a strategy spin on Minecraft. And, well, the reviews aren't too kind. This game has a lot of problems, which is exactly why only 26 people, according to PSN profiles, have 100% of this game. But I have a strategy to make legendary difficulty not so legendary. More on that later, for now, let's begin with the game. In a twist on the Minecraft formula, the villagers and the zombies are now friends? The real enemy here is the piglings. With the world in peril, these things, what the bloody hell is that? They require the services of an adventurer, which shows a cutscene of the character in question. And to be honest, all this cutscene did was make me wish I was playing normal Minecraft instead. Anyway, the adventurer gets teleported to this world and we get to pick our hero from the menu. This skeleton looking dude is mine. Immediately, this throws us into the tutorial, which is where we learn how to order allays to mine resources for you and to create troops to attack things for you, which is essentially 90% of the game. And upon completing this, we earn our first trophy of 41 to 100% this game. Complete the tutorial, we are locked in. After this, we're thrown into the main world, which further explains the mechanics. Where you do things such as repairing villages which have been attacked, and destroy piglin outposts. These ones here are very small, but later in the game, they'll get gigantic. Whilst taking out one of these, I earned Banner Expert for simply giving 25 orders, which is completely unmissable. After taking down the base, there's another cutscene where we meet the four major bosses in this game. They all have names such as the Beast and the Devourer, but I'm just going to call them Bob, Phil, and I don't know, fucking Mildred or something. In their plot, they shoot a laser at the sun and turn the world into a permanent nighttime. So we go and take down the portal, shooting this laser. And with these stone golem troops, it goes down pretty easily, earning a story-related trophy for taking it down. I love how the graphics just go like super CGI. There it is with light comes hope. It's here, however, I was feeling a little bit spicy, and I decided to take on the trophy for beating the game on legendary difficulty to avoid further playthroughs. And yet, yeah, this really kicked my ass at times. The beginning is much the same, replaying what I had just done previously. At this time, I decided to sit in some speed wheat for two minutes for another trophy. Eventually, I reached a fortress I had just taken down, and this time it's a completely different feeling. My troops are getting massacred. My player can only firm like three hits and eventually I have my first death. I returned a couple minutes later and at this time I earned a trophy which seemed like this would be an easy spot to get. There is one boom at a time for giving 10 individual orders to creepers. And if me being stuck on the first fortress of the game wasn't an idea for the jump in difficulty, I also earned no time to swine for defeating 1000 piglins. After sending in countless troops, we take down the portal again on legendary difficulty. Cool, there it is, it's down now. So we've done that now twice, uh, now we've done it on legendary as well. So the rest of the game, if it's like that, it's gonna be doable even on legendary by myself. So let's see how that goes. Yeah, the rest of the game is not going to be that simple. The next few hours of the game were mainly exploring, as this would help my efforts. Unfortunately, and I didn't realize this at the time, it would also make the enemy stronger. I took down some small outposts for Prismarine, which is gonna be very useful for some upgrades later on. Whilst clearing one of the outposts, I found some dogs, which, well, didn't seem too happy to be freed by me, let's say. Why did the dogs all immediately run into the lava? There's only one left there. I also found things such as this frog, which we can ride instead of my horse. This will be useful for the riding in style trophy for riding all of the different mounts. At this time, I also found a tiger and a beetle mount. The beetle being my favorite of the bunch, but with the frog by sitting in water for 10 minutes, I can earn a trophy, amphibian. So why have I been doing all this? Well, three of the bosses from earlier, Bob, Phil, and Mildred, have set up these outposts, and we're gonna have to take out a total of 15 of them to have a boss battle. The problem on Legendary Difficulty is they can also upgrade and build new bases if you don't take the original five out quickly. With some upgrades and these big dons called firsts, I thought I had enough to start taking them down. And I sort of did. I managed to just about take down one base, but I still needed more firepower. So I called in backup from some of the Minecraft mobs. I freed the skeletons, the creepers, and the zombies for their respective trophies. All you have to do for this is defeat some piglins and take down a portal. With our new forces, I went back to start taking out some of Bob's bases. 
and with just brute forcing my way through, I sort of did decently. I got a trophy for defeating 10 enemy clangers, and I couldn't tell you which enemies they are in this absolute mess. And then I found 5 ally chests, which are dotted around the world. To get closer to the portals, I can use an ability which I unlocked from collecting Prismarine earlier. What this does is it cures the Neverack, allowing me to build on it. This will be very important later. By curing 20,000 blocks, I earned Soothe the Scars. After finally taking out a set of 5 portals, and believe me, this took a very long time, Bob is sent through to the overworld, and he can be unended for a trophy, which we'll get later on. With Bob down, I took the time to do some exploring, and I found the last of the firsts, which are essentially super units to help with taking down enemies. And with that, I left the game for the evening. Waking up the next morning, I had a message from someone asking to boost some of the online trophies. By simply having him join my game, we both earned working together. And then by setting up a custom versus game mode and giving each other the win, we earned two easy DLC trophies. Versus mode is separate to the main game, and I will be coming back to it for a few more trophies later on. But before that, back to the main story. After getting absolutely annihilated by bases, I found a video which explained about using redstone launchers to take down and weaken enemy bases. So I took some inspiration from that and set it up. At this time, it wasn't done properly, as I still didn't have enough resources to make them fire quickly and far enough. But I will show you how to do that shortly. For now, me and this fella started an attack on a base. And whilst it didn't go well, and we didn't actually destroy it, this happened. So that bulldozer destroy a base in under seven minutes. What base? I don't, I don't understand. I haven't destroyed a base, have I? So I think the trophy glitched in my favor. I'm not 100% sure what happened there, to be completely honest. Anyway, attacking Phil didn't go too well. So I did some other tasks instead of exploring, like gliding off a mountain on this beetle for 30 seconds for the trophy. Whee! And finding a bird to get riding in style for the last mount. It was also at this time I found a badger and a squirrel. Not that you can see them in my army of dogs, but I earned Petting Zoo for patting every kind of animal. There are supposedly about 10 different animals, I just tried to pet them whenever I saw them. In order to get my tactic for taking down the remaining bases to work, I needed more resources. So I took out some smaller outposts again, and whilst doing so, I earned a trophy for destroying 250 total buildings. But as you can see, I still had 10 huge bases to take down. It was time for me to call upon a friend to help take down the next bases. You see, this game is built for up to 4 player co-op. And if the game wasn't completely dead, it might be an easy way to do this. Meet my friend, Tom. They've just jumped in. They're just jumping in and now one of them's not able to get mad. We tried brute forcing through a base with troops, but that just didn't work. We lost a lot of creepers. Go on, kids. Huh? I think they're just, I think they're dying before they even explode. <laughs> so it was time to engage Operation Redstone Launcher. Essentially, I'd place down a battle drum to make the launchers fire quicker, and most importantly, a spyglass tower to make them shoot further. And then I'd just have the troops camp outside defending the structures. And with the assistance of Tom, we took down a few bases together before I took some down myself. And to be honest, from here, the gameplay was pretty samey. I'd run to a base and place down the right things now that I had the resources, and open fire whilst defending any piglings who attacked. Whilst doing this, I earned a trophy for being buffed by a super jump for 20 minutes total. With all these bases down, it was time to face Phil, and 15 hours into the game, it was really starting to piss me off. You see, in online, there are issues with lag and the game basically just freezing you in place. And whilst it's far from ideal, you sort of expect some issues online. But in single player, lagging like this, it's a joke. Oh, this game's so fucking shit. Like, why does it constantly just lag? I'm offline playing by myself. So yeah, I was getting pretty annoyed. Anyway, we face Phil and just once again sit far away enough so that we can't be killed. And we just keep bombing him until eventually this happened. By defeating Phil, the villagers get this special axe and they can also be recruited to work with us. With my rewards, I built my last upgrade tower to unlock Variety is the Spice of Life for having each different tower built in one world. With one boss defeated and the other weakened, we turned our attention to Mildred. And according to some of the guides, this was gonna be the hardest of the three. Well, not for me. With this launcher method, this was by far the easiest. Mildred's enemies sit on these raised platforms in the skies, meaning they can't actually get down to harm us. So it was very much a case of set up, destroy the towers and portals, and move on. The only occasional problem is the AI building more bases as you're destroying them. 
do you mean there'll be a new piglin base in the world tonight? Stop building fucking bases as I'm destroying them. But after a few more bases, we finally fight Mildred, and the same applies here. While shooting, I earned not a fan for defeating 10 of a certain type of fan structure. Until eventually, 30 minutes later, Mildred is no more. Rest in peace, Mildred. Perfect time to say, if you're enjoying the video, drop a like. When this video hits like, I don't know, fucking 10 likes or something, I'll start Minecraft Dungeons. But leave a like anyway, and comment RIP Mildred if you made it this far. With two out of three bosses defeated, the only one who remains is Bob from earlier. And this is what I like to call Operation Bob. He's a tough one, as I can't really use the redstone launchers. So, I set up these giant towers, which cause effects such as freezing, stunning, and bombing. By placing them next to each other, we earn bringing out the big blocks. Unfortunately, Bob is a tough cookie, and when I'm finally about to finish him off, he destroys the village, meaning we have to wait another day to carry on fighting him. Oh no, not the fountain. We're so close. So because of this, I made sure to clean up a trophy with the spare time, for gathering 1,000 wood and stone, and 125 coal, redstone, and diamond by mining it. With that, we return to Operation Bob once again. And, well... He's already- How has he already destroyed the fountain? What the fuck? Right, this time we'll have him. Again, after waiting another 20 minutes. He's so dead. 3%, 2%, yeah. That should have been what happened last time. With Bob, Phil, and Mildred down, it's time for the final boss of the game. The Great Hog. Let's just call him Dave for simplicity. Essentially, he comes in and destroys the main hub area turning that into a giant boss area. But before that, there's a few extra things to do. With the witches now on my side, I built 10 cauldrons for a trophy. And then I spawn in 50 witches for another trophy. Now with that done, let's go fight Dave. I called in Tom again for moral support and see if he would also gain the trophy for beating the game on the hardest difficulty. He didn't. But honestly, with this method, apart from the boss taking about 30 minutes to go down, there wasn't really a threat. We took over a portion of the base and just hit him from afar. There it is. <laughs> we, we've done it. Defender of the overworld, defeat the great hog. Oh, there it is, legendary hero. Defeat the campaign on legendary. And with that, we are finished with the game. The hero returns to his world and the story is complete. There are now two quick campaign DLC trophies to achieve for having certain knockback and gravity settings on. So back into the campaign I went on super cheaty easy difficulty, one-shotting basically everything. Just look at how quick this goes down. Be ready for their relentless attacks. They're not giving up yet. Within about an hour, all the bosses and fortresses had been defeated again. And after deleting Dave once again, we earned the two respective trophies. When piglings fly, defeating a custom campaign with knockback value of 200% or greater, and a custom campaign with gravity value of 60% or less. With every campaign trophy earned, all that was left was some fairly easy versus mode ones. I chased this player for about 5 minutes, finally unending him in a tree. I then found a method for the trophy, Feed the Flames, which would require me to get 2400 lapis in 30 minutes in versus mode. This sounds a lot harder than it actually is. All you really do is basically build lapis generators and then spam stone spawners until the trophy pops. Just look at the amount of stone golem uh, spawners I've put around the map just to get that trophy. By upgrading my buildings to command 80 troops, I can earn full force. And then finally, all I needed to do was win a game with less than 10% of my HQ's base. This can be done in private match completely solo, just by switching teams. There it is, Nailbiter. Defeat an opponent with less than 10% of your HQ's health remaining in versus mode and... True Legend, Platinum in Minecraft Legends. That was definitely a long and hard one, but if you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and click on screen for another video by me.